afternoon, everyone, and thank you for joining us today. My name is Rachel, and I'll be moderating today's webinar, Five Ways to Boost Customer Satisfaction Scores in Your Health Center, hosted by 3C Logic. First, I'd like to introduce our guest speaker. Representing 3C Logic, we have Guillaume Sainhoff, VP of Sales and Marketing. Guillaume brings over 10 years of experience in the customer service arena and routinely shares best practices on how to marry technology and business processes to enhance the overall customer experience. Welcome, Guillaume. Thanks for joining us today. Rachel, it's my pleasure. Thanks for having me. So during this webinar, Guillaume is going to help us explore some of the most common customer service complaints, five ways to boost CSAT scores within your help center, and then how to implement all the solutions and best practices you need to boost customer satisfaction, retention, and revenue. So at this point, I'm going to give the floor to Guillaume. Rachel, thanks again for having me, and I uh, appreciate the opportunity to, uh, to present to everyone today. Thank you, everyone. Uh, for those of you that are joining us, uh, we uh, routinely uh, host these webinars uh, for your benefit. Hopefully, you'll find uh, today's topic instructional. What I'd like to start with is, is um, a, a quote, uh, a statement, uh, a data point that I, I routinely use uh, because I think it really highlights the state of, of the market in which we're in today, and that's that customer experience is actually expected to overtake price and product uh, as a brand's key differentiator uh, by 2020. And you can actually see that already uh, in the manner in which um, com uh, companies operate today uh, in relation to their customers. There's an increasing drive to focus on the experience uh, and sometimes at the expense of the brand's uh, product uh, and price. Uh, you can go ahead today and, and see products that are priced uh, below their competition and yet individuals are willing to pay a premium. In some cases, that has to do with the fact that the customer experience is living up to a certain degree of, of expectation uh, that goes ahead and merits that uh, additional price, uh, even though the products may be very similar. Um, it also speaks to sort of where we stand in regards to customer loyalty. Um, there is now a, a, what we call a switching economy, which represents approximately $1.6 trillion, uh, which is uh, almost a 30% increase since 2010. And what a switching economy uh, speaks to uh, is uh, basically the floating dollars in the form of customer loyalty and uh, customer uh, prospects uh, that um, are alternating between different brands as one customer switches uh, from one provider to the next. Uh, the key reason for them looking for an alternative largely being driven by the experience that they've been provided uh, at their current provider. Uh, and so for some companies, obviously, this is a big issue. Retention, obviously, is, is the key to uh, the success of many companies. It's obviously far more expensive to acquire customers than it is to retain them. Um, but it also speaks to the opportunity uh, for those companies that are looking to grow, uh, the opportunity if they focus on customer experience, uh, to acquire these customers, uh, and if they're successful, obviously, retain them from being poached from uh, competing competitors. And so what we'll talk about today is really look at how can you improve the satisfaction of the customers that you serve and what are some best practices that you can utilize to take advantage of obviously the opportunity in front of you, the switching economy, that $1.6 trillion uh, and how to do so effectively. And really the, the first item really is to take a look at delivering a multi-channel experience. This is really tied to the fact that 76% uh, of individuals today are going to communicate with your business, with your help desk, via different channels, be it uh, voice, email, text, chat, social media, voice, uh, video, and so forth. Obviously, the options are, are almost limitless, and uh, uh, it's only a matter of time before there's a new channel that pops up uh, that uh, businesses will have to uh, wrangle with and figure out how to um, offer to their customer base. But really what this highlights is that you absolutely need to provide a multi-channel experience because the number of channels that are available for customers to utilize and that they expect to be able to utilize when uh, communicating with a business are actually expanding. So what you have here in front of you is, is a comparison chart from Forrester uh, looking at uh, the uh, growth in different uses uh, for different channels uh, from 2012 and 2014. Obviously, um, a new report will come out in 2016, uh, notably this year, and I would expect it's going to highlight uh, this continuing trend, which if you look at the bottom, uh, back in the day in 2012, 22% um, of uh, U.S. adults uh, had been known to use Twitter uh, as a customer service vehicle. That increased all the way up to the 37%. Um, you can see a notable increase in the usage of SMS. Uh, uh, voice as a self-service tool uh, actually didn't exist 
uh, four years ago, and all of a sudden uh, accounts for almost half uh, of, of U.S. Uh, uh, adults, online adults, uh, up to 48%, and so on and so forth. And what you'll see is that uh, at the end of the day, it's not that other channels, uh, you know, uh, uh, staples like, for example, telephony are going away. It's just the manner in which customers choose to use them is actually changing. Um, and so ultimately the conclusion is that companies with extremely strong omni-channel customer engagements are actually going to be able to retain, on average, close to 90% of their customers. And that's because you're communicating with your customer base on their terms and making yourself available regardless of which channel they choose to use. And that's one very strong way to make sure that you remain relevant to your customers uh, and maintain or able to deliver that customer experience on the mediums that they prefer. Now, of course, the next item that you're going to want to address has everything to do with wait times. Uh, in today's uh, technologically driven age, it's not uh, a surprise that uh, as um, uh, speed of communication and the manner in which you can communicate with individuals focus on speed, that ultimately customers would expect that the service that would be given to them by a respective uh, company will mirror image uh, those, uh, you know, that emphasis on quick service. It doesn't mean quality should be, uh, held, uh, should be held hostage uh, to uh, rapid service. Uh, but it does mean that customers are unwilling these days to really wait for very long to receive that service. And you can see here, you know, less than half are willing to wait up to five minutes. Uh, and then if you increase all the way up to 10 minutes, uh, less than 20% uh, of your customers will actually still be remaining on hold. Uh, that is not just for voice. That can apply to chat. Uh, it's a little bit different from email. But ultimately, the conclusion here is that when a customer is reaching out to your business, they expect you to be responsive. Now, one way that you can alleviate uh, wait times, uh, if you know, relations uh, in relation to voice, for example, would be to provide a callback option. Um, it's not that customers aren't willing for you to let them know that you'll get back to them in a 30-minute or one-hour period. Um, it's that they would much rather prefer that you let them know if that's going to be the case, so they can continue on their life. Um, for them, time is 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 money, no different than it is uh, for a business. Um, and they simply want, in the, in the scheme of customer experience, they simply want that to be acknowledged. And so if you offer a callback option, uh, it's the opportunity to uh, keep the person in queue, um, and then at, uh, as soon as you have an agent available, to immediately follow up. Keep in mind, though, that if you do follow up, uh, majority of customers still would rather that you follow up within a 30-minute period, uh, regardless of what the channel might be. Uh, it's actually, in some cases, much shorter than that if it's social media. Uh, social media might be within minutes. Um, so again, the, uh, the degree of patience is, is heavily correlated to the type of medium that the customer initiated their conversation with your help desk on. Um, but at the end of the day, um, you can buy yourself a little bit of time if you can set expectations properly, which is really, really the point here, is, is allow customers the opportunity to make that determination uh, and give yourself the opportunity to follow up on those under those circumstances. And I mean, a perfect example would be Zappos. I mean, 80% of their calls are actually handled within 20 seconds. And some of that has to do with the manner in which they, they're configured. Some of that has to do with the, uh, the manner in which they manage their workforce. Uh, and it also has everything to do with the fact that they use um, uh, telephony tools and CRM platforms, technology, if you will, to their favor so that they can actually meet those those uh, those metrics, those KPIs. And you know, if we focus purely on telephony, the interesting thing is even uh, an internet company like, uh, uh, like Zappos will openly admit that even if, for example, one medium, for in this case telephony, only accounts for 5% of their typical uh, 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 telephony traffic, that it's still actually uh, gives them an opportunity to set an emotional uh, or, or establish an emotional relationship with their customer. And ultimately, that speaks to uh, customer experience. Customers, even though they want to communicate with your business on their terms, they do seek out or want a relationship. It may be only for a very brief period, but that brief period is your opportunity to make sure that you can convert them not just into an end user, but a loyal one as well. And that's where you can all of a sudden start retaining your customers and maybe eating into that uh, switching economy that I alluded to earlier. Now, obviously, you want to try and optimize your calls. 
if you look at typical customers or typical businesses today, one out of four customers will actually uh, report that their inquiry was not resolved. Um, and largely due to the fact that uh, they're constantly being routed from one individual to the next. In other words, when they call into your help desk, uh, you know, the agents are often not uh, either qualified or, um, or not given the appropriate tools to be able to provide the level of service that the incoming individual uh, or customer might otherwise expect. So if you look at calls specifically, uh, some of the typical issues are, for example, rostered as staff factor uh, or a shrinking factor. Uh, this refers to you know having agents uh, technically uh, in the office building but otherwise preoccupied with other tasks that prevent them from being able to help with the management of incoming calls and inquiries chats and so forth um, poor uh, ability to forecast uh, the skill requirements that you might need depending on the typical types of use cases that your help desk might encounter uh, an inability to actually account for the or forecast uh, for the amount of staff that you might need at any given period. This specifically applies to uh, seasonal companies uh, or perhaps it could be um, uh, software-based companies that just had a, a recent release. Um, these types of situations could obviously be resolved if you're using a workforce management tool that could help uh, using algorithms forecast based on your typical uh, uh, traffic and volume uh, across mediums forecast the different types of individuals that you might need so you can actually anticipate um, what your help desk might encounter in any given day or period whether it's the holidays or, or whatever the use case may be um, some cases it's, it's, it's simply poor rationale in terms of how the help desk has been organized or the forecasting that was put in place and then of course inability to route to, to managers most often managers tend to be sort of on the back end they they monitor from a distance uh, if you have the appropriate tools available, you can actually make use of the escalation matrix that you have made uh, in place to allow supervisors to actually lend a hand when there's an issue that, uh, that uh, perhaps an agent has encountered that they're either not qualified uh, or have tried to resolve unsuccessfully so and, and need that point of escalation to keep the customer uh, engaged and, and ultimately look to resolve that main issue. But at the end of the day, um, you know, uh, there's very simple tools that you can use. Uh, that would also facilitate uh, your response rate and the effectiveness of your help desk before it even reaches an individual. Uh, an interactive voice response platform like an IVR, uh, you know, uh, for the civilians on the line, this would refer to, uh, uh, you know, the uh, technology or workflow uh, that an individual would encounter when they contact your company. Press one for sales, press two for support. Uh, you can do similar things with chat. You can also do intelligent routing with email. Ultimately, it's workforce orchestration for uh, the different communication mediums that you may offer your customer base. And the ultimate point being is how do you automatically route or intelligently route individuals, uh, customers, to the most qualified team uh, or individual agent uh, that can help resolve their issue uh, in the manner that you would, uh, uh, you know, would hope for, for under the best circumstances. And that speaks to automatic call distribution, also speaks to skill-based routing based on the agents that you have on hand. Uh, and so on and so forth. So a very good tool right there. At the end of the day though, you also want to try and facilitate the access that uh, your uh, uh, database may have on each of your respective customers so that it's actually easily available to the agents that are uh, staffing your help desk. Uh, if you look at recent studies, on average, uh, almost half of service agents actually are unable to resolve customer issues largely because um, the, they are disconnected, they have disconnected systems, uh, they're using archaic interfaces, uh, disparate applications, data being housed in, in multiple locations, uh, or, or simply the system is not optimized to display the, the relevant information that a customer may be inquiring about at the point of interaction, uh, which is obviously when the customer is ready and available and looking for a solution. Uh, and any delay in that regard is obviously going to be at the expense of the customer experience or the level of customer experience you might be hoping to achieve. Uh, the other issue is obviously human error. Um, even if you have uh, the world's best uh, solutions at your fingertips, whether it's a CRM like a Salesforce or Sugar uh, or a ticketing platform like a Zendesk or ServiceNow, ultimately the, uh, the data that would be available in those platforms is, is only as accurate as the individuals or the processes you have in place uh, to make sure that the data is actually current uh, and, and accurate. Um, if you look at recent studies, less than 10% of all interactions are actually entered into a database like a CRM. Um, and that speaks to why certain CRMs, it may feel as if they're underutilized. Uh, it's largely because 
without data to power uh, uh, the workflows that those platforms rely on, ultimately you, you have a glorified uh, address book, if you will, without a lot of teeth to it. And so ultimately, you want to be able to try and look to integrate your solutions across both your call center, your CRM platforms, as well as perhaps your marketing automation, your service desk, and so on and so forth, so that you can actually allow uh, the various systems that you use at the different stages of the customer journey uh, to speak with each other. Uh, so that ultimately the agent that receives that incoming call, regardless of where the customer sits within that customer lifecycle, they have the relevant information available, it's up to date, and they can use it to their advantage to help address that customer's specific inquiry, regardless of where the customer uh, sits within your specific life cycle. And again, this speaks 100% towards optimizing not only the efficiency of your agents, but doing so while making sure that you're keeping the customer experience uh, first and foremost uh, uh, central to how you address uh, customer inquiries. And of course, lastly, you know, if we look at a fifth point, ultimately, you know, there are no perfect processes. Anything that you implement today ultimately is most likely going to be put to the test tomorrow and subject to, you know, tweaks. But that is contingent, obviously, of having the uh, platform, uh, the reporting platform available so you can actually measure your results and accordingly tweak them. Um, unfortunately, you know, if you look at uh, recent statistics, 31% of organizations will tell you that they closely monitor uh, the quality of the interactions of their target customers, um, when in fact, uh, while 92% of contact centers leaders see high value in sharing metrics in real time uh, with their agents, uh, you'll actually see that only 8% receive the performance metrics uh, as soon as they're generated. So not only is there a lag, but most often there's, there's a complete disconnect uh, between the different platforms. So the agent ultimately is faced with either a lack of data uh, or uh, outdated data which ultimately uh, is going to immediately be recognized by the incoming consumer because obviously they're, they're aware of exactly what the status is of their issue and would expect that the business uh, it, it knows uh, just as much as they do. And that's where there's a huge disconnect. And again, that's what plays into the um, or helps foster the switching economy that we referred to or started with earlier uh, at the beginning of this webinar. And if you look at the top five metrics that most likely you would want to measure that provide the greatest value, uh, that you would want to share with your agents so that they can, in fact, provide that degree of customer experience that you expect. There's a couple basic things. Um, obviously, this might become, uh, you know, you might advance these metrics uh, and provide more information, but some of the basics would be to look, take a look at the number of calls that you have waiting in queue. And again, I'm using calls loosely. It could be the number of emails that are waiting in your queue. It could be the number of chats. It could be a number of unanswered uh, Twitter messages. It doesn't really matter what the medium is. What's important is being able to look at what your response time is and are you falling behind those inquiries? And that speaks to earlier what I spoke to in regards to hold times. It also speaks to setting expectations. And it also speaks to just having an understanding of you know, uh, your staffing requirements. And so metrics are going to help you measure that. Um, establishing service level agreements, so SLAs, both internally and then perhaps externally, so customers are aware of, of what expectations you set with regards to your response times, and making sure that your agents are living up to that. Again, SLAs are completely contingent on having the KPIs to measure against to make sure that you're meeting those requirements or those levels of satisfaction. Um, customer satisfaction. Uh, simple things would be surveys. Um, there are different ways that you can achieve surveys, but ultimately you want to query the very customer base that you're using to make sure that your interpretation of how well your team is performing is actually in line with uh, what customer uh, customers are actually feeling or at least the sense of, of whether or not you're providing level of, of customer experience that they would expect. Making sure that you adhere to the deadlines and schedule that you have. Um, again, you can measure that uh, at the agent level. Are they responding to customers within the appropriate time? Are they making sure that they initiate the callbacks uh, as was originally uh, established with the customer and so on and so forth. And then last but not least, take a look at first con uh, contact resolution, so your FCR KPIs. How often or on what percentage basis are your agents able to address an inquiry on the first time or first attempt by that customer? Uh, if a customer calls you and then has to repeat that attempt to reach your business because the initial request was not adequately addressed, ultimately you're gradually losing them uh, and potentially will lose them to a competing alternative or, or, or competitor. And so these are just basic things that you will want to take a look at. And obviously, there are different tools that are made available to you to ensure uh, that your agent and both, uh, as well as your supervisors, have access to the real-time data 
so that you can intelligently monitor uh, your agents both in real time using dashboards uh, and also doing it um, virtually by doing, for example, silent whispering or call monitoring during active calls so that you can actually do real time coaching in addition to looking at uh, reports, uh, historical reports to uh, spot trends and anything of that nature. So if I take a step back here, I'll, I'll, uh, you know, there are five things that we looked at. Uh, we looked at the ability to actually use multi-channel uh, to help make sure that you can speak to your customers on a relevant basis. We took a look at uh, the importance of making sure that you maintain your call queues. We discussed the importance of looking at uh, skill-based routing or how you intelligently route individuals. Um, we took a look at the importance of, of real-time reporting, uh, and then we also took a look at uh, the importance of making sure that your agents have access to the relevant data, uh, not just at any time, but most importantly, when it matters most, which is the point of interaction. If you do any of these five items, or most importantly, if you combine all five over time, there's no doubt that you will actually see an uptick in the satisfaction levels of your consumers. Uh, and that will ultimately have an impact on your bottom line, the reputation that your brand has publicly, uh, and ultimately also have a direct impact on your ability to retain your customers and presumably grow that customer base. So that's it, Rachel. Thanks, Kim, for your time. Uh, we hope everybody enjoyed the presentation today. And if you'd like to learn more information about 3C Logic, please visit our website or contact us directly using the provided information. Thanks again.